What's going on guys? Etika here to bring you something very special. This is going to be the debut of my Pokemon battles after almost six months of inactivity in that field. And the first thing I gotta say is thank you all for being so patient with me as I try to set this all up. Now, there's a lot of reasons as to why it happened, but I'm not gonna focus on those too much because the point is, is that we're finally back in the building and I'm gonna be working on getting these uploads as frequent as possible. Now, you may notice that the format of this whole thing is not exactly as much as I hyped it up to be, and that's mainly because I haven't really finished the renovations that I'm doing just yet. I have a whole lot of new stuff coming. There's gonna be a whole different format of the way the videos look. It's gonna be a new logo, a new intro, there's gonna be new graphics, new channel layout, new everything. It's pretty much getting a brand new, fresh coat of paint, and therefore I haven't really been able to finish that that fast, or at least as quickly as I had hoped on. So what we are going to get right now is basically somewhat of a preseason. So, for example, um, consider this like a scrimmage in a sense, like how basketball season they usually have practice games before the actual season starts, but it's still technically part of the season, but it's not really. This is basically a scrimmage, a preseason, blah blah blah. Basically. This is the preseason of the Pokemon battles, and like I told you guys many times before, the Pokemon is pretty much my most valued content, to me at least, so I want to put a lot of work in for the way that it looks in the presentation, so that's why I'm taking these precautions to make sure that it's brought to you extra special, but for now, you're going to have to deal with it like this. This isn't usually my standard, usually I'd be outside, usually I would be um, in some kind of weird environment, but whatever. We're here now, this is going to be the way it looks for now, and I hope it'll be enough to satisfy you guys, because as you all know, I focus on entertainment first, everything else after. I, I also have to apologize for not posting a battle video yesterday, because there were a lot of technical difficulties that I was having trouble with, and mainly with Pokemon themselves. Now the thing is, is that um, a lot of the, I think the last week, or no, no, maybe not the last week, but maybe like the last few days, I spent them trying to get a fur fro, a shiny one. I was trying to get a shiny fur fro, 6 IV, with um, the impish nature or bold or something like that and it was I was fucking up so royally and at the end of the day I never got my fur fro and I wound up with a fur fro that has zero HP IVs but everything else perfect so it was it was so retarded but the, so the fur fro I'm using right now is really really dumb and there's a whole lot of things that led into that but I, I don't I don't want to get into those I'll explain in the comments if you guys want to know so I'm dealing with a really retarded fur fro and I, yeah, by the way I'm using fur fro I know motherfuckers didn't expect that <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm using fur fro, boy. You know the power of that bitch. Oh man, but another thing, dudes. I don't know about you, but going to the battle mason. I'm sorry, I don't have the time. I don't have the patience. I haven't done any of that shit. I don't have hold items for any of my Pokemon. The only Pokemon that I think has a hold item is my Houndoom. Oh yeah, I got a Houndoom. <laughs> Fucking Lucifer is back in the building. Lucifer is the same Houndoom that debuted in my first ever Pokemon battle on YouTube, and. I felt it was more than fitting to bring it back for the first battle in 6th generation that I'm going to be posting. I mean, I, I love Houndoom in every single way, and plus it got a Mega Form, so you know Game Freak knows that there are Houndoom fans out there. Houndoom is the only Pokemon that has a hold item, and uh, my Furfro, I just gave it the Rocky Helmet instead. The Rocky Helmet still works good on it. Either way, I'm talking way too much, man. Let's get into the battle. Now, usually I would do a team preview and a breakdown, explanation, etc, etc, but not for this one. We're just going to go straight into it after almost four fucking minutes of rambling on. Okay, so um, we're gonna. <laughs> it's been so long, man. All right, let's, let's see if your boy still got the juice. Um, let's get into it right now. And um, so, anyways, I'm battling an opponent today who was named Miguel, and he's going to start off with his Tyranitar. I'm in there with my superior. I do not want Stealth Rocks up because those are going to screw Lucifer up the ass royally. So I go for the Taunt here, which was sort of risky because he could have possibly had the Fire Blast or maybe the Fire Punch. I've seen these Tyranitars around, and it's somewhat of an old set, but hey, they're still viable. Anyways. I do happen to go for the um, the glare on the switch and I hit the scissor and you know even though some of you may say that slow down scissor is bad news or rather it doesn't really mean anything eh, you know what a chance, a chance to power flinch is totally fine with me but of course scissor is going to go for that u-turn to get some switch initiative I go into my fur fro who has zero defense IVs I still man no zero HP IVs yet I still managed to eat up that damn u-turn pretty well I would have wished that I had recovery with my leftovers but I don't sadly but anyways he goes into his blastoise here and now I was thinking that probably I, he's going to go for the Aura Sphere. I do not want to take any Aura Spheres because Furfro can't, doesn't really have that great special defense. So I decided to go into somebody that can take the Aura Sphere or at least somebody that can threaten the Blastoise out since I knew my superior would be able to take anything that this guy wants to offer. 
probably not two, but I can take at least one. And now, knowing that it's probably better to just go for the attack straight off the bat to do as much damage to this Blastoise as possible so I can possibly kill him with some priority later on, I went for the Leaf Storm there just to ensure that this guy doesn't have any time to recover or get off two attacks. And that works out pretty well for me. Now, as you can see here, he comes out with his Nidoking, and I know a Nidoking that slowed down is not too much of an issue. And plus, on top of it all, I happen to go for the knockoff. So, it works well for me because, you know, Sheer Force and Life Orb together, Life Orb's um, HP, no, no, Life Orb's damage with the HP for you attacking is nullified with Sheer Force. So, I wanted to make sure that the Life Orb was gone. So now, I felt like I could take the Nidoking's attacks a little bit easier, so I go into my Metagross, and I know he would be threatened out. So, I took this time to set up my Stealth Rocks to ensure that everything will be getting some entry hazard damage. And I see that Haunch Crow on his team. That thing is a fucking threat, and I don't want anybody getting threatened by those sucker punches. So the stealth blocks were a priority, and now he's in there with his Tyranitar, and I know it was risky to stay in on this guy, but you know I, I had to get my stealth blocks up. So whatever, I go into my Barbaracle now, knowing that I might just want to save my Metagross for later because it does have priority with the Bullet Punch, which could be useful in taking down the Haunch Crow maybe. But then again, Haunch Crow does a sucker punch; it'll be faster if he uses priority on me. But anyways, I go into Barbaracle because it's the only Pokemon that has a Fighting type move on my team. And some of you might be saying, what kind of fucking Pokemon are these? Mixed tier battles, hello people, Mi mixed tier. I use mixed tier Pokemon, mixed tier battles, I'm all about the mixed tier, because it's so unpredictable. But anyways, now I go back into my Furfro to be able to stop his Scizor, since I know he's most likely going to try to damage something. Um, and then, on top of it all, I thought that, uh, you know what? He might just try to go for maybe like a uh, switch into his um, Haunch Crow just to set up in my face. So I wanted to hit something with the Thunder Wave. But uh, it doesn't really work out too much. He stays in there and not only does he have Default, but he also has Roost. So he gets his HP up to maximum. But I'm not really seeing this as too much of a concern because... No. Oh, because I do have Houndoom left. Yeah, I still got my Houndoom left. So I can hit this guy with a Heat Wave, even if he sets up from here to Kingdom Come and gets rid of the Stealth Rocks. But now that the Stealth Rocks are gone, I do have the Haunch Crow to worry about. So I was thinking at this point, I should probably save my Fur Throw for the Haunch Crow, because I do have Baby Doll Eyes. <laughs> I have Baby Doll Eyes, which will lower its attack. And now... Knowing that I wanted to bait him to go for the flamethrower, I go into my Escavalier, then hard switch into my Houndoom to get the flash fire boost. So this way, anything that comes in on the on the heat wave will be able to get KO'd instantly. He comes in there with the Scizor, and I do have a flash fire boost, so I managed to Mega Evolve here into Mega Lucifer. I, I fucking love Houndoom! This is this is so beautiful! I miss you! I miss you, girl! Oh man! Houndoom! Oh, I missed you so fucking much, man! Anyways, Houndoom's able to go in there, decimate the Scizor with the Heat Wave, with the Flash Fire. That was so overkill. But now, I know what Meow Sticks like to do, or rather, I found out after this. They usually have Prankster, and I didn't want my I didn't want my Houndoom getting slowed down. That's why I specifically switched Houndoom out to go into the Metagross, because what can Meow Stick really do to a Metagross since it is Steel and Psychic? I'll be able to take whatever this guy wants to do, but as I see, he goes for the Calm Minds, and so I'm like, what kind of freaking Meow Stick is this, man? I decide it's not safe to have that Meowstic staying in there calm mining his ass off. So I go into my Fur Fro. Some of you might be saying, why go into Fur Fro? That's because, you know, Fur Fro has Roar. And even though Fur Fro is not a specially defensive behemoth, it does pack a, a bit of special defense. I think it's base 95. And it'll be more than enough for me to live the Dark Pulse that this guy goes for. Go for a Roar, send in his Haunch Crow. Now, what I should have done here was go for Baby Doll Eyes and lowered his attack because he's going to be able to kill me. And of course, what ability does Haunch Crow have? Moxie. Moxie boost is going to be really dangerous in there, but thankfully I managed to preserve Lucifer's HP to the point where I feel like I can stable or I can really take a, a Sucker Punch and be stable afterwards. And as you guys can see, even though the Sucker Punch with the Moxie boost did a lot of damage, I'm able to still stay in there, go for the Heat Wave, and defeat the Haunch Crow. So thankfully things worked out there. Although it would have been way more intelligent for me to go for the Baby Doll Eyes with my Fur Fro instead of going for the Thunder Wave because I would have been able to get priority and a priority intimidate on him, and then he only would have been a neutral HP with the Sucker Punch, but it didn't really matter too much, because he still got taken out anyways, thankfully. Now, here is where things get really interesting. So I'm like, okay, a Scavalier in there with the Meow Stick. Let me just go for the knockoff, because you know what? I don't want him to have gradual recovery, but what I should have done is gone for the Toxic, because you're about to see things get taken to another level, and I've never seen a Meow Stick played like this. Like, the dude who I was battling, he, I, I was, I was typing to him in the chat while this was going on, and I'm like, dude, you're Meowstic, man. What kind of freaking set is this? And um, you guys are gonna see because he has me paralyzed. He's got the Dark Pulse on his Meowstic, and Dark Pulse has a 20% flinch rate. He's gonna para flinch me with a Meowstic, and I'm especially defensive to Scavalier. Especially defensive. Uh, can you believe that shit? 
Anyways, now I know that he's probably not going to get the, para um, the paralysis hacks on the first turn. At least I was hoping he wouldn't. So I go in there with Barbarical, who does have the Shadow Claw, and I'm able to take down his Meow Stick. But if I had gotten power hacks there, then things would have been ugly. Because then I would have only had Houndoom, and Houndoom would have been taken out by the Meow Stick with the Thunder Wave. But anyways, it works out well for me. Because Nidoking King is paralyzed and I am naturally faster, I'm going to be able to take down the Nidoking King with the... Um, with the razor shell and that is going to be a good game so that was a really good game Miguel was a great opponent he was a nice guy it was really fun playing against him and he had a very interesting Meowstic set and Meowstic gets prankster so that's something interesting if you guys want to experiment with a Pokemon who's a little bit unique the guy was cool and the Meowstic was interesting a power flinting Meowstic I could, he told me it ran trains with some other teams and fucked up Aegis Slashes and everything I'm like what? so as you guys know I'm 23 years old almost 24 been playing Pokemon competitively for almost seven years now the game gets a little bit boring to me so that's why I do mixed tiers just to be able to experiment a little bit see what works what doesn't uh, it's usually very very fun for me and especially now that I'm playing on Pokemon Showdown so I'm tying out all these crazy teams and seeing who's viable and who's not so you guys will be seeing a little bit of an increase when it comes to the quality of the teams or I rather I shouldn't say a little bit you'll be seeing a lot of increase because I don't know I didn't play Pokemon Showdown in fifth gen but now I'm playing in sixth gen it's very useful for testing out certain builds and uh, I, some of you may have seen my Twitter and on my Twitter account, which you should, by the way, totally go follow because I talk about stuff from gathering to my videos and my battles and whatnot. I said I was going to post two battles today because I fucked up and didn't post yesterday. So, are you guys ready to go on another journey with your boy Etika? I'm ready. Let's go. We're going to go into another goddamn Pokemon battle, people. And this one was against somebody named Tony. Now, I'm not going to do the team previews. I don't know. I just, I just don't like doing team previews anymore. I just rather get the battle going and then I explain as we go. Like I said, I'm going against a guy named Tony. I start off with Houndoom and for no fucking reason whatsoever. I just wanted to start off with Houndoom. But anyways, now, uh, of course, Samurai threatens me out, but I figured that maybe I could sponge some hits from the Samurai and go for a Toxic with my Escavalier. Not exactly the best, best play, but uh, it was the only one that I could think of that would really work at that moment because I thought it was a specially offensive Samurai. Turns out I'm wrong. Not specially offensive. It's a physical Samurai. And so he goes to the Sword Dance and then he goes to the Razor Shell. It does a ton of damage to me, but I'm able to get the poison off on him at least. So, you know, that'll be great for gradual recovery. But I'm worried now because, you know, who can really take a hit from this guy? Well, who else can take a hit from this guy? Well, then again, we do have my Furfro. And, of course, obviously I go into my Furfro. I didn't remember that moment. Sorry about that, guys. But anyways, I go into Furfro. And I'm going to be able to tank this hit really, really well. As you guys can see there, he does have a Sword Dance up. And yet I am able to take it. Now, I, what did I do? Did I go for the, um... I think I went for the baby doll eyes. Yeah, go for the baby doll eyes. And I'm going to be able to slow the Samurai down really well. So, he can't really do the... He can't really do too much to me, actually. I don't know if they get Brick Break or not. I've, I think I've seen a Samurai with Brick Break. But regardless, I'm able to finally stall out the Samurai to the point where he will die from the poison. And that works out well for me because I still have my Furfro. Though I would have loved it with Recovery with Leftovers. But he goes into his Arcanine now. And of course, I am threatened out because I know they do like to carry close combats. So I go into my Golurk to be able to sponge the close combat in case he does go for it, which he actually does. Arcanine has really great coverage, by the way, with Wild Charge, close combat, Flare Blitz, all those other things. And knowing that he probably would not want to stay in there, knowing that I might carry the potential Earthquake, I go for the Stealth Rocks here just to get some residual damage because he does have that Arcanine. And um, it would be great to get some damage on that Arcanine. So he goes into his Keldeo here. And Keldeo threw me off because I'm like, okay, Icy Wind? That's bad because I was going to go in there with my Superior, outspeed him, go for the Glare, and then slow him down to make him easier to get killed by somebody else on my team, like maybe uh, my... Well, that's the thing. Keldeo is kind of tough to kill. I should have probably stayed in there or gone for the um, the Leaf Storm, but I had to throw somebody out there. But I just thought of this idea now, but he still manages to be faster than me. And you know, Superior is an extremely fast Pokemon, so this guy managed to outspeed me with Keldeo, which means that it's obviously Scarf. So a Scarf Icy Wind Keldeo, that is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, but also one of the most easy to take advantage of. Go in there, Barbarical, eat up the Icy Wind, go for the Shell Smash, and knowing that this guy will not be able to kill me with the Icy Wind, and even with the negative special defense boost, I'm thinking I'm going to be pretty well pretty well made in there. I thought he might want to switch out, but he actually stays in and goes for another Icy Wind. So I go for another Shell Smash, baby. I'm taking advantage of these boosts because even with the Icy Wind speed lowering nature, I'm still going to have plus two speed at the end of the day. So it doesn't really harm me too much, and I'll still be faster than everybody on his team except for his extreme speed Arcanine, so I have to be really careful because the only thing that I can see stopping me at this point after two shell smashes 
is the Arcanine. And plus, on top of everything else, I do have negative two stage defense now. So he's going to be able to do a lot of damage to me with this extreme speed. Am I going to be able to live? Live that shit. 9 HP, I believe. Go for the Razor Shell. Knock Arcanine right out the box. So that's a big, big threat that's taken out. I don't know, maybe he should have saved his Arcanine for later, but he doesn't really have priority in anything else. So Heracross is going to come in. Now, of course, he is going to Mega Evolve, but thank the gods that Heracross does not carry priority because Barbarical is going to be able to easily take him out with the Razor Shell. Thankfully, it does not miss because Razor Shell only has like 95 base accuracy. Works out well for me. Goes into his Porygon Z. Porygon Z is about to run into a goddamn glitch because the damn hammer. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> the cross chop totally eviscerates this guy, so he's done, and then Magnezone comes in there. With those plus two boosts and speed, I'm still going to outspeed this thing. He's not going to be able to live it. I was worried that maybe something might have a Focus Sash, but it wouldn't really be practical for any of his Pokemon to have a Focus Sash on his team, except maybe his Samurai because it does have Aqua Jet. But, anyways, hit the guy with the Brick Break, and that's going to be the end. So that battle was not, that was a horrible battle, actually. The last game that I posted was, well, the last game that you guys just saw was a horrible match. I, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it was still fun, and I did promise you guys a double header since I did fuck up from yesterday, so I think that will be cool to add with this video. But, anyways, I want to thank you for tuning in. I'm going to be doing these Pokemon battles on a regular basis. I'm going to be trying my hardest. I know you guys really wanted to see battles, and I have a really great way to do these battles thanks to my goddamn computer being a beast as it usually is. I'm going to be able to put these things out on a really frequent basis. I'm having a ton of fun with 6th Gen. Now, some people ask me, are you accepting challenges at the moment? No, I am not accepting any challenges because, like, I think a hundred people want to battle me at the same time. And while I wish I could do that, I'm spending a lot of time doing a lot of other things. I'm working on other categories on my channel. I'm working on other videos at the same time as this one. Still working on the, the season revamp for the Pokemon battles. It's going to be kind of difficult for me to accept challenges, so I'll only really battle when I'm looking for one. But once things lessen up a bit, and once like my agenda becomes a little bit more easy to manage, then I could possibly do battles in the future. But for now, no matches. But I do have an exception there, because I bought this amazing webcam. Some of you may have seen this in another video, but um, I got this webcam, the... Logitech C920. I'm going to be using this to do some live streams, and on the live streams, I'll obviously be accepting challenges. So you always have that chance. And if you guys really do want to see a live stream from me, in addition to all this other stuff that I'm doing, definitely let me know in the comments what you want to see with this. Definitely let me in the comments. I mean, let me know in the comments what you want to see with anything else I do. I'm just really excited, you know. I'm sorry if I if I seem like I had jitters in this video. I do have jitters, man. I'm finally back doing what I love the most: playing Pokemon with you guys. It's going to be a fun journey, and last year's journey, oh man, last year's journey was incredible. We grew so much so fast, and I'm just curious to see what this year has to bring, you know? I don't know what growth awaits, I don't know what awaits down the road, but all I can do is what I've been doing. I'm going to be giving you guys that great quality, that great presentation, the entertaining battles, the, the variety. I'm just going to be trying to give all you guys the best I can so this way we can progress together, you know. Of course I'm progressing as well. Of course I'm making money from it. Of course I'm doing well personally. But you gotta remember that even though I am making money off of this thing, I'm making these videos to entertain people, you know? At the end of the day, I want you guys to be able to watch these videos and say that was fun or say that was entertaining or blah blah blah, you know? I'm rambling on. Some of you will probably have stopped watching the video by now, but I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.